I'm Anna Cardi from Youth Media Workshop, and I'm going to be interviewing Gia Lewis Smallwood. So I'm just going to ask you some startup questions. Perfect. Um, how are you the varsity coach at Parkland? Yeah, um, I am one of the Parkland volleyball coaches on staff. There are three of us. I'm an assistant coach, and um, we have our head volleyball coach, Cliff Hastings. Cliff Hastings, I think I've heard of him. Um, what made you want to coach volleyball? Um, actually, I do the sports performance part of volleyball, which basically means I get the girls ready, um, in shape, make them faster, stronger, do jump training with them. That's sort of my role on the team. Um, Cliff Hastings, who is the um, director, he's also the director of Primetime Volleyball Club, a club in town, um, and he um, is now you know, head coach of Parkland, approached me about being a volleyball coach about it, and I was like, I think it's so much fun, and we've had a blast, absolutely love it. Oh, bet. Um, have you always played volleyball or any other sport? No, um, I actually have not always played volleyball. I, in, um, when I was your age, I did basketball um, and track and field. And then in high school, I did tennis, basketball, and track and field. And then in college, the University of Illinois, I did basketball my freshman year, and my sophomore through fifth year, I was track and field. So what school did you go to um, that you played sports in? Yeah, so I went to Booger T. Washington Elementary <laughs> School. <laughs> oh my yes, goodness. Yes, a long time ago. I was in magnet school. It was an excellent school. Um, and then I went to Franklin Middle School, so I know I'm stepping on some territory <laughs> here being at Jefferson. Okay. And then I went to Centennial High School. Okay, so did your race ever affect how you played at those at the sports? Um, I was very fortunate that when I was playing sports, um, I feel as though I got treated rather fairly. Um, I was fortunate enough that when I was playing, I was um, a, a vital to the team, so that I, my coaches were very fair to me, largely because um, of my role on the team, and then we also had some other really good teammates, and we just made a really good group. And right. so I didn't experience the kind of um, blatant racism that I think some other people um, in my situation might have experienced. I never experienced that. I was fortunate that we had um, really close-knit teams, um, coaches, we all got along really well. We were, we were a really good team, and my basketball was a really good team, or track and field was an, just an excellent team, so I didn't have a whole lot of experience. Yeah. So did you ever see any other African Americans getting discriminated because of it? Um, I would say that for the most part, our coaches were pretty fair. Every coach that I've ever had has been somewhat strict. I've never had, um, and I'm a professional athlete to this damn discus thrower, and I've never had a coach that um, he pretty much, it, all the rules were harsh, but they were harsh for everybody. So it wasn't like one group of people got easier than ever. No, it was hard for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> so, I what you mean. Yeah, so I feel like from that perspective, um, they were very fair in that way, but it was also very tough, if that makes sense. So you went to the Olympics? Um, I tried out for the Olympics in 2008. What yeah. was it like there? Um, the Olympic trials is really amazing. The United States is interesting because we're one of the few countries that you just have a trial. It doesn't matter what you've done before. If you qualify to be able to try out, you try out. Whoever is the top three on that day makes it. So you could have, like, broken the world record before, had a bad meet. If you're not top three, you don't make it. It's oh. just that day. Oh, yeah. Or most other, that. Yeah, or most other countries, they look at your overall performance. How have you been this year? What are you ranked in the world this year? Okay, right. and then they kind of, not the U.S., you could be ranked number one in the world, and if you have a bad meter or not top three, you don't go. Wow, yeah, harsh. It's very, yeah, it's very, very cool. So what was the ratio of whites to African Americans at the Olympics? Did you see anything? Olympic trials, um, it was very interesting. In the world of sprint, I'm a thrower. I throw the discus. So in the world of discus throwing, it's pretty uh, fair across the board. You start to see um, there's quite a few actually African Americans that throw discus and shot put. Um, and then there's quite a few uh, people who are um, of white origin. There's not a lot of people who um, are outside of African American. Does that make sense? There, yeah, you I don't see as many right. Asians, at least right. for America, that I've seen. Um, sprints, they always laugh and say, if you're an African American, or if you're a white person that can make the sprint final, <laughs> you're doing really well. Yeah. So that's kind of the running joke. It's usually African American. Distance is usually more Caucasian. More Caucasian based, yeah. 
So then sprinting, would you say that was like your main sport throughout your life? Actually, I was a sprinter. I sprinted from the time I was five years old. My parents had me in summer track, and then I competed around the country. And then I was a sprinter in high school. And then in high school, my last six weeks of high school, my high school coach asked me to try the discus for fun. And the reason why he asked me is because when I was in high school, we had won our sectionals, and we had won our conference the entire years I was there. And my senior year, we were in jeopardy of not winning the conference. Like, we had to really get some points so the discus was a wide open event and he said do you want to try it if you can get like second we can get you know nine points and it can help us win and I ended up trying and I in six weeks I ended up throwing really far so that the University of Illinois came and offered me money to compete for track and field and I had said no I've already committed to play basketball for University of Illinois and not interested in doing track and field and so my freshman year I actually did both sports and I really like track and field so then my sophomore year through fifth year I just did track so I'm sure you've had a lot of coaches throughout your I have, life? Yeah. Were any of them ever African-American? Very good question. My early coaches that I had early summer track, um, probably from the time I was five until 15, until I hit high school, um, I personally, they were almost all African-American. I had very few coaches that were not African-American. Um, once I got to a little bit in middle school, I had some, but not necessarily. I had more um, Caucasian or white coaches. Um, and then I have had more, so actually I've had more white coaches since I've been a professional athlete. So do you ever see a difference between how African American co coaches coach and how white coaches? It's very interesting. Um, at the University of Illinois, they have the pleasure of having Tondra Buford Bailey, who is a uh, Olympic champion. Um, oh, Olympic medal holder, mm -hmm. world champion. She's fantastic. She is now the head women's coach for women's track and field. You're so annoying. She's an African American woman, um, and she's just outstanding. I haven't seen a huge, a huge difference between the two. Meaning that one group coaches better than the other. Mm -hmm. There are several coaches who are African American who have had just amazing athletes. Conversely, there are several coaches that are Caucasian who have had amazing, amazing athletes. Sure. Yeah, so I haven't seen a real disparity. A lot of it is, regardless of what race you are, if you can get an athlete to perform. Does that, that if you can figure out how to get an athlete to perform to their maximum capability to be best in the world, you'll do phenomenal, whether you're white or whether you're black. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting so, you. Yeah. So if you play sports now, did your parents or your grandparents ever play sports? Is that what they encouraged you? No, my parents grew up in the deep south of Georgia, like deep south. They both were picking cotton by the age of five, before and after school. Um, there was, they all went to all black schools that had very rural community, didn't have a lot of really good books, didn't have sports programs. So both of my parents didn't really play sports, but my mom did, they had one year of track and field. That was her senior year. So the year that she was graduating high school, they had one year of track and field, she got participated. And my father, they just didn't have the rules. I mean, because they grew up in really little tiny towns in the deep south of Georgia. They didn't really have those opportunities. So for them, um, they stuck me in sports early. I was doing ballet by the time I was two, and I was competing on a national stage in track and field by the time I was five. So how many sports would you say you've done? Oh, that's a very good question. Five or six, perhaps? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's actually a very good, that's a very good question. <laughs> yeah, that we were, I, I was the kind of kid that, um, when I was four, um, I grew up with a, a neighbor from across the street who was three years older than me, he was a boy. And I used to, we used to have running competitions, and I used to beat him. And that's when my parents put me in track. They put so that when I so when I turned, you know, they put me in summer track or whatever, right. and I was winning. And then that's when they realized that I was an athlete. So then they put me in every sport. Like I was always in sports. <laughs> I spent all of my time in sports all the time. Yeah, from the time I was probably about five years old. Did you did you like it? Did you go on with it, or were you doing it because of your parents? For me, I really love sports. It made uh, sense to me, and um, I can't see my like I can't see my life without it. Even now, um, it's difficult to imagine a life where I'm not training all the time or training for something major. Um, but I really, really liked it. I loved competing. I mean, it just I really 
there was something about that whole process that when I was little, I really got. And so um, I will say this, I felt like it kept me out of a ton of trouble. Like, you know, by the time you go to like a two or three hour practice after school and your coach has made you run for two hours, you don't really feel like doing anything bad besides <laughs> going home and doing your homework and going to sleep. Um, so I felt like it really gave me a really good sense of purpose. It kept me out of a lot of trouble. I wasn't, I was never one of those kids that was kind of distracted because we always had games or matches. And then okay. um, in addition to that, in addition to school sports, I was in club sports. And so I was always... I was like never home or the opportunity never presented itself that I could get in trouble. So you've had a lot of teammates. Did the African American and the whites get along well? Was it like, did you have little clicks? That is a very good question. I say that because um, when I was in high school, uh, most of the, well, um, I feel like our basketball team was a little bit more evenly diversed between black and white. The track team was mostly black. Uh, there was, a few white people um, that did distance, and we actually had two really good sprinters that were white on my high school track team. We were a really good team. Um, I feel like when I was in high school, everyone got along really well. I was really, really blessed with the class that I was going through that we all got along. Even my senior class, um, for the most part, the black and white people hung out. It wasn't really separated. You know, there was interracial dating, a lot of racial dating that went on. It wasn't quite as separated. When I got to college, that's a different story. Um, the African Americans largely hung out with the African Americans. Whites hung out mostly with whites. So there was a definite divide. But when I was in high school, I feel like it was a lot more closer to being a little bit more everyone kind of getting along with each other or relying on each other. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you really didn't see that in college. You kind of stuck. Um, now, our group, so there was, in college, there was a sprint group, and they practiced sprints, there was a distance group, they practiced distance, and there was throwers, which was what I was, um, discus, shot put, hammer, and, and uh, weight throw. And our throw group had a lot of uh, black and white mix. We got along really well. We were probably like, the only group of diversity that really, and actually, um, the people in that group are my best friends to this day. We're in my wedding, like... I talk to them all the time. Um, we got along really well, but I feel like the other groups, no, it was very divided. So now your volleyball girls, do you, do you see the same thing as you did when you were in college? Are they all, do they all mingle a lot, or our volleyball team? There's not a ton of diversity actually on the team um, for Parkland volleyball. Um, there's not a ton of diversity by any means. I will say this though: that team gets along really, really, really well. Um, I think there's two different aspects when you're dealing with sports on any team. There's, you know, can the team um, get along um, even when there's sort of issues that girls kind of face to each other and guys kind yeah. of face to each other? Can they kind of move past that and really work hard? And that Parkland volleyball team was awesome. They could totally do that. But there wasn't a lot of diversity on the team either. I will definitely say that. So that's one of the things that we um, were, are looking forward to changing in the, in the coming years is getting more diversity. So in high school, I'm sure you traveled a lot, right? Yeah. In other schools, did you see any discrimination against African Americans? Was it different? Very good question. You know, I think a good question. I bet my parents would have a much different response than I did. Um, I was so into, I want to beat you, that I didn't really, <laughs> I wasn't really aware of much else that was going around. Like, I wanted to destroy teams when I played them. Um, but... They probably, my parents would probably say yes, that they could definitely tell um, differences between how black players were treated or white players were treated from other teams and other schools, and they would probably definitely say yes. Um, I can't say that I've ever witnessed that in a way that would jar me out of the competitive, we want to destroy you mode, to be like, oh my gosh, kind of a mode. Um, but I bet that they would definitely say yes. I would definitely say they would say yes. So like all in all, I mean like the whole school, everybody got along pretty well? Like The classes that I were in, it, it's interesting because even now with the big Facebook thing, right, and 31, yeah. so even now with big Facebook and you now you're reconnecting with all these people from high school, everybody's friends with everybody. It's interesting. It's interesting how many people that are African American are friends with all the white people they went to high school with. It's not like there was a, it was very, but we were a very rare class that way. Most classes, no. 
this group was with this group, this group was with this group, this group was with this group. And you got that some, but when it came down to it, um, we had a boy who died my senior year of high school. He's an African American boy. Um, actually, he was like the most beautiful boy in the entire <laughs> school. Um, and he died, and I will never forget, there were just as many white people bawling at his funeral. I mean, on their knees, bawling as there were black people. Oh, wow. Yeah, and there wasn't like, oh, he was a black guy, we didn't really know, no. I mean, he just, our class sort of, we all sort of, it's just very interesting. We all kind of got along. I, I mean, I, you had your normal fights between people, but the whole, I can't hang out with this group, I feel weird if I'm black hanging out with a white group, what? That didn't really seem to be as prevalent as I'm sure it was. I will never forget that. I mean, the entire class just bawled and bawled and bawled. What you had when I was in high school, though, that I think would probably be a sign of racial discrimination was you had very few African Americans in AP classes. Very, very few. Um, that's where I was, I and like three other people, probably out the four, that had every AP class every hour. Um, you, hard, you saw very few African Americans in advanced placement classes. That's where I think the real racial issue comes into play more so than in sports or that kind of thing. I think it's with the academic side of why there's so few African Americans. There were, we started off with a large number of African American males when I was a freshman in high school, and then that number like plummeted by the time I was a senior. The amount that actually graduated was very slim. That's where you start to see racial instances of things that are not quite fair, I guess. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, it's not that I encountered any racism in terms of I wanted to take AP Calculus, I wanted to take AP Physics, they were fine with it. I never had to like prove myself or beg to get in class or, you know, I was like, I'm taking, I want to take this class. Okay. Um, but there was, I, there was, I was, you know, I was never the only African American, but I, there was probably two of us. <laughs> there was wow. never like more than five or six. That's where you really, that's where when I was going through high school, that's where you really see it. So do you think there's like, do you see a difference now from how sports were with discrimination from back then and then like now? Yeah, I think sports now, to be honest, because... Um, with the whole NBA, NFL, um, high school, um, NCAA, getting a Division One scholarship, all that stuff. Coaches want the best players. They don't care what race they are. If, they, if there is a player that can help them win a national championship or if there's a player that can help their team go to the Super Bowl, they don't care. They absolutely do not care what race, creed, or color you are if you can help them win. And that's what you're starting to see a lot of now. Um, they will work with anybody um, that they think can help them. That's really what you're seeing. You don't see a lot of, well, you're good, but I don't really want you because you're black. I'm not, I haven't really encountered that um, and haven't seen a lot of that. If you can perform on the court, they'll take you. If you can perform to where they think that they need to be, they will take you. So, as a senior year in certain colleges, did you think, like, well, like most people, if they got scholarships, did you see, did you see any discrimination with whatever different colleges when they took? Um, I'm sorry, say that one for me one more time. Like, in um, colleges and people have scholarships, did you see any discrimination from different colleges against blacks, whether they took them or not? Um, and not for track and field and not for basketball. Those are the two, those are the two definite things where you see lots of um, African Americans that will most likely get scholarships well over um, somebody that's white. Um, if you're a white athlete, um, you have to really prove that you're good, especially in track. You have to prove that, like, you can beat African Americans. Otherwise, they're not going to take, like, you have to go way beyond to show that you are worthy of a scholarship. Usually, they don't take you. They usually take mostly African Americans. Um, other sports are a little bit different. Like, it'd be interesting if I was a tennis player. I'm sure that's a completely different world where you probably see tons of discrimination against. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but the two sports that I were in, no, they're predominantly African American to begin with. Um, so you don't see the discrimination in like who they give scholarships to. They usually give scholarships to the person that runs the fastest time or the person that has the best stats. That's usually how it goes. So if you, and it's um, university is interesting because they take kids from all over the world, 
whoever is the best in the world, that's who they take for track. You could live in Israel, you could live in Africa, you could live in Canada, you could live wherever. Whoever has the best times in the world, that's who they want. Okay, so um, one last question. Sure. Do you ever feel you have to stand up for anybody that's African American? I mean, like, throughout your whole life, have you ever had to do that? I do in terms of, um, the only time I felt that way was in terms of academics, like I said earlier. Um, the sort of sense that for whatever reason, by the time, we you know, and my, I was a little different. Now, I think a lot of juniors can take AP, what's called AP classes. Yeah. When I was in when I was in high school, there was some classes that were available for juniors to take. But mostly it was their senior year. You took a ton of AP classes. Um, that's where I really feel like I wanted to stand up for African, more African Americans and saying, why aren't more people in these classes? And because they're actually, those classes are very good. They do really get you prepared for college. I will say that my, my senior year, all except for, I played violence, all except for strings, um, I took all advanced places classments from first hour, I think, into seventh or eighth hour, however many hours you had. I had every class in the AP class. And I always felt like, why aren't there more people here? You know, the fact that there were so few African American males that actually graduated. Um, you know, where were they? Why? You know, that's when I really felt like there's something really wrong here. Um, my brother experienced an incident. I did not experience this. He actually walked into an AP physics class. And the teacher said to him, well, why are you here? And he said, well, what do you mean? So I'm a machine. I got, I got the right room. And, yeah. and they said, no, well, you know, why are you here? Well, the other thing with me, and I should probably should disclose this, was I had a mom that lived at the school. Like, when I say lived at the school, I mean, she knew all my teachers, was always, she was always there. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I didn't get as much discrimination, I because I felt like I got hardly nothing, right? Yeah. But they also, you know, my mom was on it. Like, she volunteered at the school, would stop by their off, like their uh, offices after you know ow, I mean, she was on it constantly she lived at that school constantly lobbying on our behalf so that a racial instance so so that a race an instance of racism would not be likely because they grew up in the south and in the south there was they had racism 24 7 mm -hmm. had, my mom has horrible experiences with um, how whites treated her then so when we she was here. She lived at school. She was always at school, volunteered, buddy buddy with every wall, the teachers, <laughs> administration. It was like crazy. So I didn't, you know, I would wonder if that hadn't happened to me. So when that incident happened to my brother, within like four hours, my mom was up at the school <laughs> talking to someone, like making change. And then the teacher was like, no, I didn't mean, you know, it was like squashed and my brother was final. You know what I mean? But I wonder if I did not have a proactive parent to the extreme that my mother was, I probably would have encountered more than I did. But she was great friends with all of our coaches. Um, everything. She was there letting them know that don't even begin to start something. It's not happening. So I, that's why I say that. Um, but I wonder if that's why. I have a feeling that if I did not have a proactive parent, that it would not have been the same experience for me. So that's why I can say, no, I haven't really seen, haven't felt, haven't because I think they, everyone got the message that's you, that will not happen with her. Like, you will not. That's not even on the table for discussion. Yeah. So I think that's why. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for no your problem. time. No problem. Thanks. Okay.